Um, before we answer the question posed in the previous video, we need a few definitions. Um, an incomplete lattice an element and let's say this lattice is S so an element A from S is called a supremum irreducible if it cannot be represented as a supremum of any subset of S that excludes A. So if um, A cannot be represented as a supremum of T for any T uh, which is a subset of S without A. And similarly, this element A is called infimum irreducible if it is not an infimum of any subset of S, which doesn't include A itself. So the point here is that uh, once you lost A, you cannot use the supremum operation to reconstruct it from other elements of the lattice if it is supremum irreducible. And you can't use the infimum operation if it is infimum irreducible. Um, the idea here is that in some sense you don't need all the elements of the lattice if you have supremum and infimum operations. You can reconstruct some of the elements from other elements using these two operations. But you can't do this for irreducible elements. Alright, so we say that a set is called a subset of our complete lattice S is called Supremum dense if uh, using elements from T and the supremum operation, you, you can reconstruct the entire lattice. So for all elements A from S, uh, you can find a set, a subset T1 of T such that A is a supremum of T1. And similarly T is infimum dense if it is sufficient to reconstruct every element of S using the infimum operation. So every element A is, an, is the infimum of sum of of some subset of T. And now we are ready to formulate the second part of the basic theorem. Um, the second part says that every complete lattice and complete is important here is isomorphic to the concept lattice of a formal context Jmi if some conditions are satisfied. But I feel I should say something about this word isomorphic. Well, roughly speaking, 
I'm not going to define it precisely, but roughly speaking, isomorphic means the same in structure. So if you have two lattices and you want to say that they're isomorphic, this means that, well, roughly speaking, this means that you can draw their line diagrams in such a way that they're absolutely identical. Well, except for the labeling, maybe. So the nodes may have different labels, but the structure is completely the same. So you have the same number of nodes and you can arrange them in such a way that the two pictures will be identical. So this is when lattices are isomorphic. And um, here we're saying that every complete lattice has the same structure as the concept lattice of a formal concept if, or of a formal context, GMI, if, and I would put a double F, which means if and only if the following conditions are satisfied. First, there must be a mapping gamma from G to L and another mapping mu from M to L uh, such that the image of G is uh, supremum dense. Uh, the image of M is infimum dense and also G is related to M in the context if and only if gamma of G is less than or equal to mu of m. So what is it all about? Um, what we what we are saying here is that we find a labeling um, for each object G. We find an element in in our lattice L, and we say that this element corresponds to to this object G. So basically what we do, we take an element in a lattice and label it with an object from our context. And we do the same with attributes. We take some element in the lattice and we label this element with an attribute of our context. Then gamma of G is the set of all lattice elements labeled by objects from G. And it must be supremum dense in this sense. Um, mu of M is the set of all elements in our lattice labeled by some attributes from M. And this set must be infimum dense. Um, so if you start, if you take uh, any element in the lattice and this element is, say, not labeled by any attribute, then you can use the infimum operation and apply it only to elements labeled by attributes and you'll get this unlabeled element back. So it's a, it's an infimum of some of the labeled elements. That's the meaning of infimum dense. And the third condition tells us that, um, if in our context we have that an object G has an attribute M, then the element of the lattice labeled by G must be below must be less than or equal to the element labeled by this attribute M. And this works in the other direction as well. So if uh, in the lattice we have two labeled elements, one is labeled by G and the other one is labeled by attribute M, then in our context, the object G must have the attribute M. That's what the theorem says. Okay, um, but is it true that for any complete lattice, we can construct a formal context that satisfies these properties. So is it true that for any complete lattice, we can construct a formal context that has the concept lattice with the same structure? And the answer is yes, because we can define a formal context
uh, whose objects are the elements of our lattice L and whose attributes are also the elements of our um, lattice L and the relation I is just identical to the relation to the partial order of the lattice less than or equal to. So again we take um, the elements of L as both the objects and the attributes of our formal context and we put a cross between two elements A and B if uh, the element A is less than or equal to the element B. Um, what labelings should we use? Well, let's just use the identity labelings. So we map every element from L to itself with gamma and every element from L to itself with mu. So then gamma of G or gamma of L is just L itself and mu of M, which is mu of L, is L itself and they are obviously supremum dense and infimum dense simply because they include all elements of our lattice and uh, the relation I, well it satisfies this property just because we explicitly uh, put this relation, the relation of the lattice as, uh, as the relation I of our con formal context. So by this theorem the concept lattice of this formal context must be isomorphic and this stands for isomorphic so it must be isomorphic to the lattice L from which we started. What this, what, what this part of the theorem says is that every complete lattice is in a sense a concept lattice of the concept lattice of some formal context and combining it with the first part which said that every concept lattice is a complete lattice, we can see that concept lattices and uh, complete lattices are in the in a sense the same. They're in a sense equivalent. And that's the main meaning of the basic theorem.